Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel, The Ninth Cup, where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose. This is going to be a general reading for Virgo Ascendance. Virgo, this is a reading for the Venus and Capricorn transit, which is happening in your fifth house. This is an important transit for me just because Venus is a personal planet and it's transiting Capricorn for significantly longer than when she uh, typically transits any sign. She also will be going retrograde and during that time it could just be really mindful or you know beneficial for you to be mindful of any type of disillusionment, confusion, things coming up from the past regarding partnerships, commitments, agreements, um, and also value and this could be all within yourself you know promises you made to yourself and um, anything unresolved. Uh, fifth house is you know the house of creativity and children and play sexual engagement so it could also be a time of you know when you um are having you know passionate connections but maybe there are ones from the past that you really want to leave in the past right and you don't want to engage in so it's just something to be mindful of during this transit i'm going to be getting um one oracle from the romance angels deck even though this transit isn't just about romance i'm just wanting to get you know one energy that reflects that part of our lives i'm going to get a moonology card and a three card spread on uh desire obstacle and solution okay so let's see what we have worth waiting for worth waiting for so divine timing is at uh work in your love life and i love that you know work is here that kind of stuck out to me because you know you are the energy of work you know virgo you rule the sixth house the house of work and you know activities daily activities routines and you're so very steadfast you know you're kind of like your fellow or sign capricorn which is you know all about building but virgo you're really much about you know putting your head down one foot in front of the other doing these kind of like small scale um short term uh work engagements so with worth waiting for i think this is really about you i think you know source wants you to know like you're worth waiting for like you're worth building yourself you're worth other people waiting on you know you to be ready and you to engage with them and that you know your time is not uh, anything to be taken lightly you know you should value your time you should value everything that you have to offer I think one thing I love about Virgo energy is that it's extremely uh, efficient and supportive and resourceful you know it's great like consultant type of energy even just like in, a, in an informal way you know not just consulting for a work or a career but you know just being that person that kind of offers insight and I think that many of you maybe don't see how worthy that is or you know how valuable that is to others um, maybe you've been kind of playing around with it, so to speak, right? And it's not to, you know, judge you in any way, but it's like maybe you've been taking your gifts too lightly. And this could be a time to really take it more seriously. You know, there's Capricorn here, Venus in Capricorn. So that is about, you know, up leveling rules and structure and removing what is not needed. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Okay, Saturn is the god of time but also is home to the 10th house so that's reputation really thinking about that more seriously i think could be um you know a theme for this transit for you what's your moonology card for virgo bring love into the situation bring love into the situation interesting so bring love into the situation i think this is really about I'm getting just energy of like you, you know, like this being, a, you know, a transit that's really going to affect you on a personal level. You know, even though Venus rules, you know, our partnerships and love and connections and partnerships, I'm getting that this is really about you up leveling your value, up leveling in terms of um, how you present yourself to others as well. You know, with bring love into the situation, it's like bring love into you first, like pour into your cup. Look, this is the Aquarius card, but see, she's holding up. She's the water bearer. So, you know, she's pouring out, but this, you know, just imagine like this pool is your pool, your tub, you know, kind of filling it up with this beautiful blessed water because again, you have a lot to offer people. And I think people know that about you, Virgo. And maybe you haven't been seeing that. Maybe you've just, again, been taking it a little bit too lightly, which is great. You know, we don't, shouldn't take ourselves too seriously all of the time. But then again, knowing when to take yourself seriously is beneficial. And that could be coming up during this transit. All right, let's get your tarot spread now. I'm going to do, um, I'm not sure if I said it already, but yeah. Uh, obstacles, sorry, desire, obstacle, solution. And we have for you, Virgo, um, across the way in your 11th house is... Uh, 
what, sorry, I blanked. Pisces, yeah, your polar opposite. Pisces has Neptune, Neptune and Pisces here. So um, this is really, really beautiful. Well, I'm sorry, no, I'm getting confused. Neptune across the way in the seventh house. Ooh, getting confused. So yeah, this is where you have Capricorn. Fifth house is where you have Capricorn, not Virgo. You're a Virgo ascendant. So Pisces over in your seventh house. Neptune has gone direct. And this is really beautiful energy because I think that is going to maybe even trigger some like loving connections. But for this Capricorn transit, this Venus and Capricorn transit, it's really about working about working on yourself first, working about like how you're pouring into self. All right. Sorry for the little mishap right there. All right. So what's your uh, desire? Yeah. Six of Pentacles to really be you know, in this balanced place where you can give and take, give and receive uh, very fluidly, very, you know, much in balance. You know, this is the bene uh, benefactor card and it's six. You are the ruler, your, your ascendant energy is the ruler of the sixth house. Sixes are also about mutual, um, mutual support, equal give and take, feeling supported. So this is you getting the support you need, is you feeling filled up and, you um, you know, high vibrationally enough to benefit and support others. So that's your desire. Your obstacle is the Ace of Cups. Yeah. So really opening up to this new beginning in love, you know, self-love, pouring into your cup here, you know, pouring into self, bringing love into the situation. Maybe some of you have been hesitant to open up to love um, for various reasons, you know, but I think that's really uh, available to you at this time. Solution, Eight of Cups. So walking away from what doesn't fulfill you, walking away from where maybe you being loving, you using love or, you know, I guess like having self-love or um, making self-love a, a, a priority, I should say. Walking away from those people and connections where they patronize that, where they, you know, they patronize like how you, you know, need to rest, how you want to eat a certain diet, how you want to, you know, um, be mindful of what you are intaking, whether it's like on TV or music, you know what I mean? Like walk away from these connections that some of you have or have had that just didn't allow you to love yourself properly. And that's what I'm getting is that, you know, you have so consistently been of service to others but maybe not the other way around. So there's been some depletion here. Bottom of the deck, six of cups, another six. So 66 could be significant. You know, it's also an equal give and take card. It's past life soulmate energy, but it's also just, you know, it's also um, inner child. So some of you could be doing some inner child healing, especially with this fifth house being the house of children. This could be your own child currently, or, um, you know, healing with that, with that connection with parent child or you healing your inner child because again I channeled just like a focus on self so maybe you know looking at like um you know experiences from your childhood where you know you weren't allowed to just have your own space or you weren't allowed to focus on self or you know we're again we're kind of put down and maybe even punished for doing that so this could be a good time to heal that pour into self start this new beginning this ace of cups which I think is really going to bring in um, a beautiful partnership within the next year or so with this uh with that Neptune direct transit in your seventh house in Pisces. Um, so let's get some angel answers. All right. So website's linked below for personal readings. I do include a tarot spread in the astrology reading, whether I look at your natal progressed or solar return chart. I also offer uh, an aura scan so I can look at your chakras to see what needs healing. Um, and there's no extended for these. I'm just coming through with some brief energies. I'll be back maybe later when Venus is actually retrograde for a collective reading. Not the right time. Another sign got this, but I think it's not the right time, you know, in terms of like avoiding yourself. You know, it's not the right time to just keep going in the same like pattern or routine that you've been in. It's really time to change things and, you know, be okay with filling up your cup. Look for a sign, awareness. And uh, within the next few weeks, so this is definitely the, within the next few weeks, as of the date I'm recording this, Venus will still be in Capricorn. Actually, Venus will be retrograde, I think, by that time or in the shadow period of it. So that's pretty accurate. Now let's get a star seed oracle. Oh, 
two of them came out. I remember Soul Plan, The Faded Life versus The Destiny Life. Hmm, interesting. Now, the bottom of the deck, we did have Six of Cups, which is a past life soulmate. Yeah, Queen of Swords. Interesting. So, I remember, you know, the fact that I was channeling heavy, like, self or, you know, like, the eye energy in the beginning. And this I remember soul plan. I think maybe some of you could be maybe doing past life regression or meditation or um, hypnosis work to help you tap into other lives. Um, that's just for some of you. Um, or just, you know, there could be divine downloads kind of coming out of nowhere. And, you know, you're like, what, what is that about? But it could be just images or significations of a past life. And then star ancestors, hidden secrets, lost wisdom, look a little deeper. Yeah, so go a little deeper within. You're more than capable of doing that. I know not necessarily the easiest thing for a Virgo ascendant, although, you know, you're represented as the hermit in the tarot card, in the tarot deck, you know, the major arcana. But, you know, that's usually like after an adverse experience, right? That's not necessarily a natural um, characteristic of Virgo energy is your, your Earth energy moved, ruled by Mercury. But I think for this transit, this could be a good time to really go a little bit deeper and really look more closely at your value. Look at, you know, just all of the great things you've done for people, how you've shown up and supported others and um, really expect that from your connections, you know. Okay, so when you buy yourself, others can see that as well and they'll be willing to reciprocate. Anyone that does not, maybe that's a connection that will fall away, especially since Pluto is also transiting Capricorn here in your fifth house. So that's going to bring in some evolution, possibly some endings. All right, so I'm going to leave it here. I hope something has resonated. If so, please like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to thrive. Bye.